I don't, I never tried to perfect a certain instrument. It was just kind of fun to play with all of them and see which one I really enjoyed, and guitar, mandolin, ukulele, uh, whatever I, that felt good for songs, like just what I used. Cool. Yeah. I have a question about the specific song you used. Yes. So I'm, I was a teenager in the 80s, and some of, so some of the, the way you're playing guitar and also your vocal style yeah. reminded me a little bit of some of the 80s music, and I'm curious because you probably weren't even No, I uh, I didn't really enjoy the pop or the stuff that everyone else was listening to. I thought it was pretentious in a way that we should all just listen to this one thing because that's what we're given right now. And I was I was given everything that my parents would listen to, and that's what I enjoyed because there was something about about all the music that my parents grew up on to then feel like I should grow up on that. So I listened to a lot of that like 80s, 70s, 90s ish that whole genre of stuff. And it all seemed appealing to me because it's just the music I enjoyed. So it's the music I now play. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's also really good music, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, still, there's still good music today, but the, yeah, the but popular it, music, you know, I think was much better. Yeah, it feels like the, the amount that people actually try nowadays doesn't feel as much put in, whereas back then it was really like, we need to make this, we need to be big, so we need to really make something like that's just there. And nowadays it just feels like you can make a bunch of nonsense and it'll sell for some reason. And I don't, I don't always understand that kind of appeal to it, in a way. Well, it's a real instrument and real acoustic thing, too, that you guys are putting on tonight, which is extremely brave and beautiful, yeah. and I love it. And you're going to be famous someday, and I want you to honor us. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we should all hand it out of this. <laughs> we'll all be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually brought our own Sharpies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there was a pile of them in the back. Yeah. I was wondering why you guys had them. We have glitter pens. Oh, yeah, really. Everything is glitter. That's right. It depends on what you're signing with the glitter pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go? Yeah, I'm ready. So there was a, there was a period in my life where I, I wanted to be a desert rat. And uh, I'd been reading uh, a lot of John Muir, and then I started reading uh, Edward Abbey. And, and so I thought, ah, I, gotta, I have to go to the desert. So I went to the desert for a while. Um, and I lived, in, um, I lived in Arizona, and, um, and I rambled around the Four Corners region for a while. And um, it was very, uh, a very interesting experience. I found out uh, ultimately I didn't really want to be a desert rat. I wanted to uh, see green, and I needed water, lots of water. <laughs> um, so I ended up coming back to the East Coast. Um, but I wrote this song um, that I started actually on the rim of the Grand Canyon, which was super inspiring. I lived in a place where I was able to go to the Grand Canyon every weekend really dreamy time in a way. Um, and then I finished this song um, in a campground uh, outside of Moab that was right on the, the Colorado River. So I was watching these rafters go by. They were on their way to the Grand Canyon. And um, this is a song uh, with a lot of desert imagery. And um, essentially, it's about um, we all have these moments in life where you kind of look back and think, wow, shit, fuck. <laughs> and uh, what, what just happened? And this song kind of like, um, it's, it's definitely about that. It's called Skip the Beat. Searching for an ocean that's flown out of sight 
harmonic thing happening. It's really pretty. Definitely like melody, yeah. Hold you? on, rough on that one, dude. So beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Couldn't decide if it was the desert wind or something going down the river. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I, I lived in uh, the Southwest for a few years, and um, that song definitely it, it resonated with me thinking about being in the, in the desert, like the Sonoran, looking across the Sonoran floor. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. the heat waves. I spent most of my time in, in northern Arizona. I was um, in Prescott a lot. Yeah, yeah. which was, uh, you know, it's sort of an odd deserty place in that it's definitely the desert, but it's but it it resembles snows. more like yeah, it snows. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, it's more resembles the like high a desert. high desert. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember hiking in the um, Ponderosa National Forest around mm -hmm. Prescott, and then like you're in the middle of this desert, these huge pine trees, and then you just get to this cliff, and it drops in this desert. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing place. Um, but I love water. I have this love affair with water, streams and ponds, and I remember when I was a child, I'd ride on the school bus, and when it would rain, I'd love to sit on the side of the bus and watch the ditches just flow with water. And it's just, there's just something about water that I need nearby. And the desert just didn't work in that way, <laughs> you know? And what's cool about Vermont is like, um, is you can go to, you, everyone has their secret swimming hole somewhere. I know I have a few, you know? But if you live in the Southwest, there's one creek in town. And on the weekend, for example, Lake Mead, everyone is there. <laughs> you know, or so there's Beaver Creek, which is just south of Flagstaff. And yeah. you, you know, you couldn't go anywhere near it. You'd be like, I want to get in. And then you'd be like, wow, there's 400 people right here. <laughs> I don't really know if I want to get in the water. You know, that warm spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just get in the dead center middle. Oh, it's the gods of. Oh, that's not good. But it was an experience. I mean, it's important to experience different places and different cultures and different environments and not just go there for a week, but to go there for months or years and, or, you know, whatever, whatever you're able to pull off. And it's helpful to do it when you're young. You're not so tied down. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Phoenix, get on the road. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was actually pretty amazed first time I went to the desert how much water there was there. Like the washouts. I, I thought it would yeah. be, you know, miles of, you know, beach sand, you know, you know. Those places are actually really rare. Yeah, what's that? Where, you, where there's miles of beach sand. Right, yeah. yeah, they're actually really rare but, spots. You know, first one with the Decker was the Sabino Canyon. Where's that? Yeah. So just north of Tucson. Okay, all right. And uh, I was actually amazed by how many little streams and creeks. And mm. I should have gone there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody for listening so closely. It's nice. Yeah. It's a nice experience. So, um, I wanted to make a plug for next Saturday night at 118 Elliott. Um, I think the reason why I'm here is because I've been doing 100 songs, like 100 days, 100 songs. Do, are any of you out there familiar with my 100 days, 100 songs thing? So what happens, I was really sick for, for quite a long time, and it was um, just like two years of just total downhill, and, um, and Coretta, what, what you don't know is whenever I visited your kids, that was like the only thing I did that day, like last, last year. So last year, I just kind of barely made it through the year, and um, so what happened was in January, I noticed, wow, I'm not, like, I'm not singing, I'm not playing, I'm not... Uh, uh, this is like has been my life so I made a commitment that I would put one song a day on Facebook for 100 days and so it, I think we're on like day 93 to, and if any of you want to like record this next song and tag me on it then I don't have to 
Well, because then I don't have to go home and like record yet something else, right? I'll do it for you for me. Will you? Does anyone have like a mechanism? Um, so, so yeah, so, um, so basically I, what I've noticed is there was a lot of mistakes and a lot of fumbling around and it, it just became this thing about like, can I just be present even if I'm, you know, forgetting the song or stumbling all over the place. It was more of a, um, and what I noticed was, you know, we're on like day, what, 93 or something. My guitar playing has improved, and my ability to sing has improved, and I can see that I'm, I'm stronger uh, now than I was when I started this, even though uh, sometimes that's all I do. Like, the only music I do that day is just cranking something out there. Um, so live on Facebook. Hmm? You're getting live on Facebook. Woo! Okay, so um, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that it's over, the 100 days is over next Thursday, the 12th, and then on the 14th, we're having a festival of the sublime at 118 Elliott, and um, when I was in college in South America, in Barranquilla, Colombia, we studied what the sublime was, and it was an awesome course, it was a literature course, and we had to define what is beautiful, what is ugly, what is tragic, what is comic, and what is sublime. And we had to find examples in music and in visual arts and in sculpture and in architecture and in writing of things that were beautiful and ugly and sublime and tragic and comic. So it was, it was, it was totally awesome. And um, so that whole concept of kind of breaking the mold on beautiful and kind of w what is that space that anybody would call sublime. And one thing we found when we were studying it uh, is that it's very subjective. You know, what's, what's sublime for one person is like certainly not for another person. So that was very cool. Um, so you'll see next to the open guitar case um, for donations, these little white papers, and it's just like the information. And um, there's a concert for parents and children at 4, 4 to 4.45, the family concert. It's all by donation. And, um, and then there's a 50-50 raffle and there's a silent auction from 4 to 10, and then um, I'm going to perform 7 to like 8.30, and uh, a friend of mine is leading a light meditation and a spiral dance, and Crystal's going to belly dance, and um, I'm having a bunch of teenagers up from a band called Impending Exorcism, and so they're going to um, do something with me, and... Uh, and then from 9 to 10.30, we're going to have a DJ dance with Amy Enoch. So um, I, I want to invite you all to, to please come out. Like, even if you come out for 10 minutes and check out Silent Auction and, and bid on stuff, because we're making a building out in West Brat, and the building is why we're doing this event. Um, what's, the, what's the building going to be? Well, um, how many of you have been to Mahalo in West Brattleboro? Okay. so. Mahalo is this beautiful um, place in West Brattleboro, and um, it's been a kind of been downloading through me. It's not like I sat down one day and said, "What am I going to do?" It's like it's just like I'm giving birth to this thing, and so this building wants to happen, and um, it's going to be a gathering place so we can have parties there because right now there's a there's a sound healing temple, but there's no food allowed in the sound healing temple, and it's just a very sacred place. And then the, the house is tiny, and there's just nowhere to have a party. Um, and so this, this um, building is like three times as big as a stage, and it's going to be a place where we can say, we're having a gathering, and whether it's sleet, snow, wind, rain, whatever, uh, we, can, we can gather and we can make a mess. And children can come and we can spill cornbread and nobody will care. And it's really important. And then when we're having a gathering and it's nice out, we can gather around the fire circles outside and sing and all that. But it's really important. Community building is very important. So that's why, that's the in, in imperative, like, we've got to get this building done. And the building is, like, 80% done, but there's 29,000 to go. So if you know somebody who just doesn't know what to do with their money, 
send them send them over to me because maybe they can help name the building. Next Friday. It's um or yeah. Like it's next name. Saturday, and you can grab one of these. And there's even little posters that are very colorful, but there's only a few of them. Next Saturday. Okay, so yay. Um. All right. Do you want a song in Spanish that I wrote for my mom after she died? Ooh. Or a song inspired by the relationship between Rumi and Sham? Mama song. Mama song? Yes. So Aaron, this is a little bit different, but I, I'm sure you can... So when my mom died, she wanted her ashes brought to the Caribbean. And this song just kind of spilled out. And I happened to have a tape recorder on me because for a long time, like the songs were just spilling out so much that I always traveled with tape recorder. The old fashioned kind, you know, tape recorders. And so um, I knew it was coming, like, oh my God, it's coming. So I just put the tape recorder on and the whole thing happened. And this is honoring my mother and it was kind of, um, kind of came out to be sung like on the boat in the Bay of Cartagena. So here it is. This is for my mother. Real quick, what is the song? Like, it's all about your mother? That's made this to it? Yeah. Yeah. It says, it says, you know, adios a mi mamá. It says to God. Because adios means to God. Mm -hmm. So adios a mi mamá is like goodbye, mom. You're going to God. And um, part of what it says is, you know, people say that God is peace, and I, I feel like that's a true thing. And um, I say to my, my mom, follow the most beautiful bright light, and I'll meet you there. Wow. Yeah.
Is it like every time you're playing that, we take you back to the place when you first got a draw? Um, my mom was an awesome person. She was just so amazing, and she was pretty wild. Um, <laughs> nut doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> but um, yeah, my mom was just really like unhinged, uncorked, like all the time. And she was a very free person, and she encouraged me to to be free. And but it made things difficult at times. There were some pretty serious issues, and. Um, Part of what the song says is, um, Mother, my, my heart has grown so much because of you. And someday, my, my heart will also fly mm. to that field of sun and, and ocean to be with you. So I think, you know, I, I've noticed that when, when people are difficult to be with, it makes you have more love. Uh, our heart doesn't grow when we're with easy people. Our hearts grow when we're with people who, who challenge us. And so my mom uh, challenged me. And uh, it's totally, so that's what I think of when I'm singing the song. It's just like just my mom's spirit. Yeah. yeah. That's an inside joke. I'm going after that one. Oh, we're supposed to talk each other? <laughs> no, no, and not talking. Um, so, but this next song is one of the first songs that I wrote. It's called Come Home, and it kind of goes with the same idea of, you know, going to that brightest light, and I'll meet you again there. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, so, and then, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go for it.
Bob Dylan, but you have a little bit of like a, there's some kind of like the way you accent like the, the, like the syllables of the songs or something, or like whether you lead into the verse or after it's a little resemblance. Again, That's a great again, much I better. <laughs> Your voice sounds much better. All hail Bob Dylan. <laughs> He didn't care much for his own voice, but he cared more about what he could say. Uh, you know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for my last song, it's called The Momentum. And I wrote it. The, the concept of the song came when I was kind of hanging out in the waters off uh, the island of Vieques, Puerto Rico. My family and I went down there for a couple weeks, and I was just feeling a lot of a lot of energy that I needed to expel and disperse and do disperse and do something with. Um, and so it's just kind of this forward movement kind of song about being motivated.
love the, the total enormity of your of so many of your songs. They're just like oh. full out. It's hard to keep it in sometimes. I know what you mean. Is there normally something you do before the end, or just? Is there normally something you do before the end, or is it just kind of? So uh, when I first wrote the song, I didn't like it at all, uh, but everyone else did. So I felt like I was supposed to just keep playing it, and it eventually grew on me. So I guess I really like it now, because I keep playing it. I just want to say it's been a really fun night. Thank you all. Yeah. I'll see you guys. Let's give it up for Phoenix Avenue, guys. We have Noel Van Winter. We have Luz Elena Mori. Greg Masterson. My name is Jason Skaggs. Thank you so much. Uh, spread the word.